You guys didn't think I was going to leave town without wrapping up May, did you? Come on. You know me better than that. Hey, what's up, bookworms? We're back with another monthly wrap-up, this time for May. I can't believe it's already June. This is wild, man. 2024 seems like it's going by faster than any year since I started this channel. And it's just been an adventure. May was definitely an adventure. We're going to kind of talk about that as we go along. So let's begin like usual, talking about what I read in May. I read four novels in one collection, I guess you would call it. Uh, let's begin with the beginning. And that begin with the beginning. This is awesome, Mike. Let's begin with the prologue here. The Color of Magic, Terry Pratchett. That was my first foray into the world of the turtle. Discworld, that is. Uh, this, I think everyone was shouting from the rooftops for me to start Discworld. And then once I started Discworld, they were shouting at me that I was reading it wrong. And look, I had all of the warnings about this. I tried to explain to people, look, I had a patron buy me five books, okay? Those are the five that I'm reading. So obviously I was going to start with Color of Magic. Yes, you guys are right. All those things that you told me that were going to not click for me, they did not click for me. For me, most of it was like, like I liked the dialogue. The humor was pretty good. I really enjoyed a lot of things about it. I enjoyed, you know, Two Flower. I enjoyed Rinse Wind. And it was like, I just didn't enjoy not knowing exactly what the narrative was trying to do. It's like he flipped all over the place. It was, I always, what I said was it was kind of like your ADD drunk uncle trying to tell you about some story he liked when he was a kid. That's kind of how I explained that. Is that it was interesting enough. But it just, I know it was supposed to be like satire or something else, I, which I'm not really aware of what that was. So, it, again, it wasn't a bad read. It's just, it was one of those, like, yeah, all the things I was told about are true, and I will be continuing with Light Fantastic this summer. And I know that's probably just made a lot, a lot of Discworld fans also shriek. But, you know, I also have Guards, Guards, I also have Mort's, uh, Mort, and I have Equal Rights. Those are the five books I have. So, I'm going to read those five. And then I will decide if I will be continuing along the disc world uh, going forward. So again, uh, not the best book, but not the worst. It wasn't nearly as bad as everyone told me. It was just kind of confusing, which again is what I was warned about. Priest of Crowns, the last book in War for the Rose Room by Peter McLean. This was excellent. This was excellent. Like my only complaint was that it ended. You know, I did feel like the climax was just really, really quick. And it, it, again, I felt like it should have been five books. And that's a good thing. But I think it, what I had actually heard is that, that McLean had actually had some issues with his publisher. And they were telling him to wrap the story up. So uh, I, I don't know. I was quite happy with it. I did a review for the entire series on the channel. I was very, very excited to talk about it because I want other grimdark lovers to discover this series. Because, uh, yeah, it was a really, really good finale. And, like, the last few senses are just like... Ah, so good. It was really, really excellent the way that it ended. So it's one of those things, guys, when you read Grimdark, you're always not going to have sunshines and puppy dog at the end. But, you know, I think the way that it did end was very satisfying as a Grimdark lover. And I think that if you guys are into, you know, Mark Lawrence, uh, you know, Mike Shackle's The Last War, if you're into, like, Joe Abercrombie's First Law, I think you're going to be quite, quite into War for the Rose Throne. I recommend it to everybody you like it darker the new short story collection by stephen king liked it quite a bit jaime and i got together and talked about it for an hour we went through all 12 stories talked about connections within the multiverse and all those fun things anytime it's a stephen king release month it always feels like an event especially when it's not a crime detective novel it's really really cool to see him kind of go back to his roots a little bit. The Silver Blood Promise by James Logan did talk at length about this one. Thought it, what I, way I described it was it was a perfectly adequate fantasy debut. It wasn't anything that's going to blow you away, but I do think it was very much for a debut novel. It was very good, and it was good enough that I'm interested in continuing with book two when it does come out. And if book two was available right now, I'd pick it up. I, so it, I think it did its job. It set the stage. It kind of introduced the last part of a trio a little too late, I think, in the first book. But the main duo of Lucan and Flea in this are they're so good. They're just so, so fun to be around. You just want to hang out with them, listen to them, like, you know, just banter back and forth. It's really good. So I think what Silver Blood Promise is a lot of people are saying, oh, it's like Lies of Lamora, and people are feeling disappointed. If you go into it expecting Lies of Lamora, yeah, you're going to be let down because it's not Lies of Lamora. Like the banter, I can see why some people might do that 
it does deal with like you know street level crime and stuff. So I, I think you could you could see why some people would be saying that. But guys, you got to remember that's things they put on the front of books to sell more books. You know, I don't think that you should go into this expecting the lies of Lachlan Moore. And I think it's really unfair to a debut fantasy author to put that on them. You know, so uh, again, your mileage is going to vary on that. I had a good enough time with it. I'm interested in seeing where it goes. But again, it isn't anything I say. You must break your TBR right now and read it. And then House of Assassins by Larry Correa. This is the second book by Larry Correa read, which is also the second book in the saga of The Forgotten Warrior. Now look, I liked book one better, but this one was not bad. This one was a little bit more set up before that epic third act of the book, which was just so good. The, the third, final act was just phenomenal. It's good, maybe if better than anything in the first book, really. I feel like the first book was a little more focused when it came to the uh, the, the flashbacks because it really would do the flashbacks and kind of just set there. This one kind of went back and forth where the flashbacks were almost kind of like a character recounting that memory and it would kind of go back and forth. Whereas I liked it just being isolated in that Stormlight Archive way of doing like, okay, this happened 17 years ago. We're going to talk about everything there before we go back to the main timeline. We're not going to go back and forth. So that's just a, a little nitpick. So nothing really, really wrong with it. I think he did a good job of developing some of those side characters. So it wasn't just, you know, the first book, all I was just, I was about Devados and I was about Ashok. Now with book two, Devados does take kind of a, a step back in this one. He's kind of a background character and I didn't think that was a good choice, but he took the time to develop Thera and, and, and Gutch and Jagdish. And I started to really, really like those characters. So he did his job there. So I'm hoping in book three, we're getting that inevitable uh, meet back up between Ashok and Devadas, and I think it's going to be good times. Business is about to pick up, as one old Jim Ross might have said. So uh, I'm really enjoying that world, and I think that uh, if you guys you like fantasy and you're tired of fantasy that just takes forever to get to the damn point, I, I think that Larry Correa is going to be just for you because he has really just found this way to make fantasies almost like a thriller in the, in the pacing, and I didn't think that that was really possible, but it's really, really good, guys. I hope you guys will check it out, but... There can only be one, right, when it comes to my book of the month. I had several, several contenders this month. And I'm not going to say several when I only had one. <laughs> I've always been confused about that. Does several mean seven or does it just mean many? I should probably know that. I probably just embarrassed myself. But hey, it wouldn't be the first time. It definitely won't be the last time. I had multiple choices that I was considering for my book of the month. And it was really hard for me because I feel like I always place these rules on myself. I say that rereads don't count. You know, collections don't count. Things like that. But guys, for me, it's impossible not to pick You Like It Darker because this was the best thing that I read this month. I was completely floored by how this turned out because a lot of things in the last decade Stephen King has just kind of promoted their, 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 the marketing team has promoted the book as something and then you get it and it's not like that thing at all so you were talking to this one was just talking about how okay he's going back to his roots he's going back to some horror he's going back to some messed up stuff and then you would get the book and you would think oh okay well you get one dark story and then you get like here's 11 other things that are just like you know the things he's been doing and no, this was actually true to the marketing. This has everything that I love about Stephen King in it. Some that don't make sense. Now, look, not every story is a hit. But I still think this is probably my favorite collection of his since Nightmares and Dreamscapes back in the 90s. And that's that's going back a way. So I always think that his short stories, they're usually pretty good. I get disgruntled when they end too quickly or that they go too long. It feels weird to say that about a short story. But that, that would be kind of like my gripes about some of the things. But I feel like this one really had some stories that if he had wanted to expand some of these in novels, I think he probably could have done a really, really good job at it. And to me, that means he's doing his job with the short story is if it's ending and you want more, I feel like that's that, that's really something that he just hit a home run on. Now, with Stephen King, obviously, he writes amazing characters. And you think, okay, well, you need time to develop characters. What this guy is able to do in like 50 pages or less with some of these characters is actually quite impressive. Should we be impressed at this point? I mean, he's been doing it for 50 plus years now. Not really. But it's just one of those things that I know that, like me, a lot of people are just character first readers. And they think, with well, a short story, you're not going to be able to develop a character very well. This is the master we're talking about here. He's still able to do it. So worry not. He can still do that. He still has his fastball in every sense of the word when it comes to doing that. But with this, I was just quite pleased with how everything turned out because there's some in here that just might be some of my favorite short stories ever written. I just think just alone, the first story, The Two Talented Bastards, was just 
Peking. It's amazing. It's everything that I think a lot of people want a dream catcher to be. I feel like he really did hit out of the park in that one. And yes, I would absolutely love like a three to 500 page novel about that story. I think it could be just amazing. So, uh, so many hits in here. The sequel to Cujo is the one that's getting a lot of the run. And uh, it was it was one of those where I felt like if you hadn't actually said it was a sequel to Cujo and had a different character name, it could have you could have probably told another story. But with that, it was more of like just catching up with that character, the lead character, in, or not the lead character, but a character from Cujo. It, it, it just seeing what they're where their life's at now, and he actually makes it quite heartbreaking when you see all the things that transpired after the events of Cujo. Somehow he makes it even sadder, and, and it's just a he's just a wizard at that. But what I didn't expect was it to turn into a ghost story, which at first I thought was a really strange choice. But there are parts of Cujo that were always unexplained when it came in regard to uh, uh, Vic listening to his kid's closet. And it was like, what was the deal with the closet? What was that about? You know, you always just thought Stephen King had said he was so messed up on drugs and substance abuse at the time that he didn't even remember writing Cujo. And just thought, always just kind of washed that up to, eh, he was didn't know what he was writing. That's why that one weird part with the closet was in there. I feel like Rattlesnakes does finally give an answer to what the deal was there and seeing that there was a haunting going on. And uh, to me, it was very satisfying. So, uh, yes, I usually wouldn't count a collection on a book of the month or something like this, but it's just, it was too good to ignore. It really was. I just enjoyed it so much. I read it in like two and a half days. I just blew through this. And again, it's just, when it comes to King, there might be a little bit of a cheat sheet. And it, 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 it's weird because I feel like in the last decade, his books have been okay. I mean, it's like it's one of those where I'm like, I don't feel like he's hit paycheck stage of his career because he obviously still has stories to tell. But every once in a while, he'll have that one story that comes out and just completely knocks your socks off. And I would put this up there with like a later where it was something that like I didn't expect it to be as good as it did turn out to be. So that's why I could not it just kind of follow that rule and say I can't count a collection because this was without a doubt the best thing that I read in the month of May. So if you guys like Stephen King, you don't like Stephen King, you don't have to read anything else. To really enjoy this, you don't even have to read Cujo to understand this. Just know that uh, if you, if you haven't read Cujo and you want to, the story of Rattlesnakes does spoil everything that happens in Cujo. So take that into consideration. But I've had some people be like, "How much do I have to read of Stephen King to read that? Nothing. You don't have to read anything. It's just short stories, guys. And I think that most of them you will find enjoyable. And that's why it is my book of the month for May of 2024. Hope you guys will check it out. So how about some channel growth? Well, this is going to be ugly if you weren't around you don't know the channel did get hacked and that messed up some things and while the channel was taken over by someone else who changed all my branding and my content and made it look like a channel was something else completely i lost about 2,000 subscribers while that was happening because people will think either mike's either had a brand change or how, how did i get subscribed to this weird micro strategy page that's an accident i'm just gonna go ahead and unsubscribe youtube's auto subscribing to these people again it's happens it, it's happened uh, i've gotten some of those back but still it's uh it's gonna look really ugly on the analytics so let's just kind of fly through it really quick not take these to heart uh 1220 new subscribers down 1010 from april so like i said we did lose a lot that were unsubscribing during that event. 419,000 total views down, 36,000 from April, and 51,000 hours watched. Also down 10,000 from April. So three down arrows are the worst, but you know, given the situation, I just think we should just completely ignore analytics for this month because, yeah, things went a little haywire. That combined with getting the, the power outage because we had the tornado that was zipped right past me. It was a wild month. It's a month I don't want to endure again. And it's why I am hopefully enjoying my vacation as you are watching this because good Lord, do I need it. Let's go ahead and move along to most popular content for the month of May. So I made 14 videos, one short, and I did two live streams. Now look, I don't count weekly updates when I look at the most popular content, but those do continue to be some of my most popular videos because people just like to catch up. And I appreciate that because I love doing the weekly updates. So I'm glad you guys do like those. But I like to look at the original content when I look at top five videos for the month. Number one, uh, standalone books that I wish had a sequel that is sitting at 11,000 views as of this recording. 
Uh, that's just really when we just look at everybody had always been asking me, you know, if Stephen King would write a sequel to any book, what would you want? And I was like, I like this. Books are kind of standalone in nature for the most part. And I said, but, you know, there are a lot of other standalone books out there, classic, modern, that I would like to have seen a sequel to. Just kind of roll through some of those ideas. And it's one of those things where you ask yourself, you know, the legacy has been helped because you didn't have a bunch of watered-down sequels. So be careful what you ask for in some regards because sequels... They're very rarely better than the original, but those are some ones that I would have liked to have seen those characters again, seeing what they're up to nowadays. Uh, my April 2024 book haul, 10,000 views. A book haul is always going to be a viewer's best friend because that's something I feel like you don't have to know anything about any book that's being talked about, and you just want to kind of see, you know, is that book sexy? Does it got a sexy cover? How's the spine look? How tall is it? And again, it gives me the opportunity to say thank you for all the things that you wonderful, wonderful people you sent to me. Uh, my channel was hacked. And what I did to get it back, uh, this is 10,000 views. That really was just a video I put out to raise awareness because, you know, the more I did research about it, the more I saw this is happening to a lot of channels out there. So it's kind of wanted to just give my experience, let people know what to look out for because content creators are targets with things like this. You're going to get tons of of collaboration offers lots of oh we'll send you this for free if you just you know talk about it for a second and then they send you a malicious email and things don't go well from there so it's kind of wanted to share my experience of that and just kind of help you if you do lose your channel these are the steps i took to get it back in under 24 hours because it really is a, an awful awful feeling it feels like someone stole your car basically uh while it is going on and uh yeah it's it was not fun it was not fun so i just want to kind of chronicle that whole experience and raise awareness for everyone who might be going through the same thing and help you hopefully try to avoid it i already talked about the you like it darker review and discussion that I did with Jaime and Fuego over at the horror show that was 10,000 views that's again uh, for me that's like a really just a bucket list thing as a content creator because before I had a channel I was just podcasting back then before I had a YouTube channel I used to watch Jaime do Hail to Stephen King over on the horror show he was the only one I knew on YouTube that would talk about Stephen King books, and it was awesome. And so the idea that I went from just a quiet viewer of his, his, his content for so long to there would be a new Stephen King book out, and he would be on my YouTube channel doing a review of it with me. Again, that's just that's just the stuff that is just very exciting, you know. And I feel like Jaime is like my twinner on another path of beam. I feel like we could talk for days about Stephen King stuff and theorize. And again, that's the guy that when I don't know something about the multiverse, I go to Jaime and he usually has an answer. So that's my sigh in all regards, and I'm so thankful that he jumped on the channel to talk with me. And I hope we can do it again because uh Lots and lots more, I think, that we could talk about without a doubt. Video game franchises that I wish would have a long-running book series. This is uh, just an idea I had about, you know, everybody always talks about, you know, here's some video games that I would like to see turn into a movie or a TV show. And that, that, that conversation came up a lot when Fallout came out. And I thought, you know, here's some games that I really liked that I would like to see as long-running book series. Now, I, I goofed on that because there apparently there are a bunch of Gears of War books, and I had no idea. I've never seen one in the wild before. So, yeah, should I have researched that a little bit before I started? Probably. Probably. I don't count the Elder Scrolls one, though, because those are like lore books. I don't really count those. But, again, uh, that's just an idea that I had of some games that had really great storylines. I'd like to see them kind of fleshed out because I feel like they're really, really great sandboxes to play around in. And if you had like a Star Wars EU, or they call it Legends now, if you had like that kind of thing where you had a bunch of different authors come together and decide to tell one linear story, it could be something really, really cool. So, uh, interesting idea, I thought. Uh, you know, uh, I feel like most gamers are readers and most readers are gamers. And so I feel like it's an easy crossover there. It's like, you know, most fancy fans listen to heavy metal music. <laughs> most heavy metal fans read fancy novels. I kind of feel like there's a correlation there. So I thought that was a good crossover. But uh, there's a couple of favorites I had that didn't really do that. It just continues to be uh, just standard book reviews. I, I really did enjoy doing my my book review for The Silver Blood Promise and my War for the Rose Throne, the series review. Uh, I'm going to continue to do book reviews. It's one of those things where I've just said, fuck the algorithm. I'm going to do them because that's what I do really still love doing. So for those of you who do watch those, thank you so much. I appreciate you. That's really what I cut my teeth on this channel doing, and it's what I like doing the most. 
So I'm going to continue doing those. And uh, I try to get it to about one a week if I can. But sometimes I, I don't like to do it for like a sequel book. So I don't really do that. That's why I'll put together those those short ones that I rip out of my weekly updates. Uh, if it is like a sequel or something. Because I don't, I don't know. You feel like you, people are interested in reading a series. They're not going to hear what you think about book three of seven. You know, So I, I try to keep it to either a series review or a book one of a series to kind of let people know what the series is is like so do i have any goals for june well i guess number one is don't get hacked <laughs> you know i have uh, locked down like fort knox in here even bought a new computer uh, just because i was too scared to go back into the, my other one but it was time it was time to upgrade uh, so just try to fully recover from all that try to get back those viewers that i lost and uh you know just kind of get back on the regular so i'm on that vacation right now getting that nice summer recharge hopefully can come back with some high energy and keep mixing things up on my TBR. Something that I've been doing the last few months uh, since I had that that reading slump is I just try to mix it up. You know, try to get something out of your comfort zone. Like I did a West, I did Streets of Laredo. You know, try to get more horror on there. Try to mix in some sci-fi. Do some manga. Not just always epic fantasy after epic fantasy. Now look, that's my favorite. That's my favorite, but you can't get burned out on it if you do nothing but that over and over and over again. So doing some shorter books, I've started getting to the point where I'm only doing books that are under 500 pages because I need a break. You know, I need a break. After Shogun, I was pretty wiped out because it was just so, so draining. An amazing book. Probably my book of the year. But I'm just saying that, you know, you need a break after that. And that's why I'm kind of pushing off some of these longer reads until probably in the fall sometime when I get filling back to, to normal here. But that was my month, guys. I'm looking forward to hopefully collaborating with some other YouTubers out there here in the next coming months. Got several things kind of kind of set up. Nothing really set in stone. We got some things set up that we're going to be doing. I'm going to be doing the Quiluminati with, with Philip and and Brian and, and John over at Talking Story. It's going to be a lot of fun here very soon. But uh, yeah, just continue to collaborate. Again, I came up as a podcaster, guys. I love to talk to other creators. It's just something that I like to do. I am a conversationalist at heart. And that's why I like talking to you guys. So, folks, what was your favorite book in the month of May? What was your favorite video that I made? What was my your least favorite video that I made? I'm perfectly okay if you tell me these things down below. I would love to hear how the month went for you. So drop in the comments, guys. Let me know what your book of the month was, and I will talk to you there. <music>